Hi, this is Stacia, and we're going to take a look at a training game that I played on chess.com. So I'm trying to get to 1800, and today I had the honor of playing an 1800 player. So I'm currently rated um, 1687, trying to break 1700 for, I think, the third or fourth time. I'm not totally sure, but one thing is clear. I need to break 1700, or I won't get to 1800. <laughs> So let's have a look at this game. I unfortunately had the black pieces here. Um, my opponent opened with one e4. I played one e5, double king pawn opening. And this move, I see this move quite frequently and I never know what to do against it. So I think I'm gonna finally study this in detail. Um, I played knight to f6. Let's see if that's right. Where's my opening book? Oh, I don't have this on analysis yet. Hang on a second. Self-analysis. Did it mess up the screen? No, we're okay. Alrighty, so... Oh, actually, let me make sure you guys see the moves. Yeah, you do. Okay. Sorry about the technical stuff there. But... We are on our way now. Openings. So knight f6 is the main move. Knight c6 is second most common. So the main move, second most common. Bishop c5 is also an option. And even d6 can be played. That's That one's not really my style, shutting in the bishop. Um, okay, um... The other moves look dubious. Bishop e7, like, scores well for black, but there's barely any games. Okay. Again, I used to play f5. Did I play it here? No, I played that against bishop c4. So I did play this move knight to f6. And we are in a Vienna game Falk beer variation. And I don't like beer, so I re resigned. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so um, he played f4. This is the move I probably fear the most because I can't play my normal king's gambit way against this, although the computer says I can. Like against the king's gambit, for example, I like to take the pawn, and when they play knight f3, I play d5. But here, if I take the pawn, they can throw in the move e5. Now, I wonder if that transposes into a shallop defense. Let's look at this for a second. I don't know that it does. Yeah, actually, my knight's just hanging. <laughs> like, yeah, that doesn't work at all. So, um, yeah, that's why I'm uncomfortable, because all the stuff I know um, is kind of out the window. This is totally different. Turns out d5 is the main move here, which I'm not familiar. And this is a Vienna game mainline. So clearly I do need to study this. And I know that openings are not the most important thing. But I have to tell you, um, it really helps my confidence and my clock when I know what I'm doing in the opening. Okay. So in this game, I played knight to c6. What could be wrong with that? And he took here. Yeah, and I was kind of realizing at this moment that it's kind of like a Halloween gambit without the peace sacrifice. <laughs> like I take here and I thought d4 is the obvious move, which was played. I feel like I'm just worse here. Let's see what the computer says. I see there were master games in this line. It's kind of surprising to me. It looks bad. Yeah, the computer says that white is close to winning here, plus 1.7. This is not what you want out of the opening, so I, I'm already getting outplayed. So let's try to learn from this. So my idea of knight c6 actually doesn't work. 
because he can take and when I take back he has d4 and his pawns are too strong so I should um, instead play d5 and counter in the center right away that looks interesting though like if he takes it I guess we take And we can play this kind of thing. We can even play queen e4 check here. Okay. Well, I don't know the, these lines at all. In the game, he did play this move d4. And yeah, I realized I was in trouble. I'm like, uh-oh. I have two options, knight g6 or knight c6. I feel more comfortable with that on c6, so I did that one. And now I think he should go e5. I mean, where does my knight go? he didn't he played knight f3 which i think honestly i would call that a mistake he should absolutely play e5 where does my knight go i mean i have to go back home and now it looks like a halloween gambit where white has all their pieces so i think this is bad for me computer agrees but instead he played knight f3 which is just kind of mechanical you know, like it's a developing move, but he could have punished me a little more. Now I could go d5 right now. What did I do? I played this move. Computer doesn't like it. It wants d5 because, let's see, if d5, now I have a square for the knight. So if e5, I probably go there. Oh, I have this square for the knight too. Yeah, so d5 is kind of cool. And if he takes it, again, we can just take back. And this is looking a lot better already. I mean, white's still better, don't get me wrong, but at least I'm not losing in the opening now. Okay, instead I played this move. I mean, I'm basically saying I might take your knight and take the e-pawn. And he did a counter pin. Hmm. Also, if he goes e5 now, I could play, um, I could attack the pinned piece, like either one of these squares would put pressure on the knight. So I don't think my move is bad. Computer says bishop d3, though. Just defend the, just defend the pawn. Okay, I got to turn off the engine because I'm too prone to like looking at it without thinking <laughs> especially when I analyze with you guys so he did a counter pin so now I could take and try to take the e pawn but I lose my queen so that's not good and e5 is a big threat now my knight's pinned so I have to play h6 see if the computer agrees with that one it does okay turning it back off h6 and I thought bishop h4 was interesting here like, he could try this move. I think I have to go g5. But can he sacrifice here? I don't know. Probably not. I have bishop e7, I think. Okay, I'm going to turn on the engine. Yeah, white's winning. Okay, so I actually did calculate that right. So he correctly um, pulled his bishop back and broke the pin. Only one problem, though. I mean, why can't I just take the knight and take the e-pawn, right? So if you do this plan, remove the defender and grab the pawn, the knight is undefended on the open e-file. So now we have to worry about moves like bishop d3, queen e2, um, what else? Well, there's no f3, which is good. Um, so if queen e2, I actually thought there I could play d5. And my knight's guarded. There's no pawns to attack the pinned piece. I thought this must be good for me. So I went ahead with this plan. And he did play queen e2, but I expected that move and I played d5. Wow. So the computer likes this.
It says black's better now. Well, I couldn't be happier with that little turnaround. Also, six months ago, I didn't know how to navigate these pawn grabs on E4 that as well as I do now. Like, seeing Queen E2 and already knowing if my knight gets in trouble. I didn't used to do that very well. <laughs> okay, but anyway, he castled. I actually thought that move might not be all that great. Um, probably I just castle now because then I'm threatening maybe rookie eight. My knight is safe. I'm eyeing this fork, which ties down the queen. I might take the bishop and wreck the structure on the king side. Yeah, I definitely felt like I was better here. I even have this pin. I don't know if that's good, but it could be annoying. So I did castle. I think that's correct. And then queen to d3. Yeah. Um, it's funny because you play on chess.com and sometimes I play like 1,500 players that play out of their mind and I have really tough games. And this 1,800 player, I'm just not impressed. I think he played more like more like a 1300 especially right now because i did hop my knight in and that forks everything and he resigned so that was the game yeah um i don't think i did anything special this game in fact i messed up that opening pretty bad so let's just review the key moments of the game i will use the chess.com feature why not because then we get to retry the moves. See if our analysis was good. Okay, so knight to f6 is totally fine. Knight c6 is wrong. Okay, so I need to know this position. I'm actually going to take a picture of it. Because I'll make a flashcard of it, basically. And why do I like flashcards? Well, I find in chess that you know when you review your games that's great but it doesn't solidify the ideas in your head unless you see it um, especially for adults probably unless you see it multiple times so you either have to play a lot of chess or you have to review the key things that you learn so that they're fresh in your mind and i'll tell you that when i do my flashcards, guess what i see those ideas in my games they always come up and reviewing the flashcards means that I'll know what to do in those situations instead of it just looking familiar, but I don't really know. Then I have to relearn. <laughs> okay. So instead of that move, I think we settled on D5 here, and that is the best. Okay, next. I found the best move. Yeah, so that this is basically remove the defender and take the E pawn. I mean, otherwise I wouldn't give up my two bishops so easily. Yeah, and then there's a fork. So it says I played with 96.7% accuracy. Yeah, I don't buy that. I didn't play the opening right. And my opponent played with 28.8%. Not, not what you expect from an 1800. So very confusing to me regarding the ratings. But hey, um, this game, oh, it brought me back up to 1690. So I must have been 1678, I think. Yeah, I think I was. So 10 points away from 1700. Um, let's hope that I get there and then I can, um, the next milestone will be 1733, I think, is my all-time high rating on chess.com ever. So if I can break that little barrier, that would be something to celebrate. And then I'm gonna keep pushing until I get to 1800, so. Thanks you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you later. Bye.